Hey there and welcome back to the Core Wrinkles channel for a brand new video. In this one we will uncover one of the solid principles of object oriented design. So we'll talk more in depth about the open closed principle. And let's start maybe just for, from stating or trying to understand what exactly the definition of this open closed principle or briefly also uh, known as OCP and then try to understand exactly how can we find out when we look at uh, some piece of code if it violates the open closed principle or not what are the red flags that would kind of like lead us to the idea that it might violate this open closed principle and what is a very common technique or what are the most common techniques to actually solve this problem and be compliant with this open closed principle so to get started let's just have a look at this very very simple piece of code that we have here where we have only just two classes like a circle and a rectangle circle of course has a property which is the radius and the rectangle has two properties which is the height and the width and then we have an area calculator this is what all our library is about our library should know how to calculate areas for different type of geometrical shapes and right now we support these two types of shapes like a rectangle and a circle and whenever you would have to kind of like uh, write some code or a functionality from the beginning it's not that you can always just think about or, or know in advance how that functionality or how the code will evolve within that functionality or uh, and if it will kind of like break one of the solid principles or not so that's often how it happens in real life when you code you just have a task you have requirement you find the most easy solution for it like th this is the very basic uh, principle keep it simple so for our use case we have just two geometric shapes that we have to support so we have this area calculator and it has this method it returns a double and it kind of like calculates the area it takes in an uh, object array and what we do is then of course we iterate through all the the objects and we try to see if it is a rectangle then we have a certain way that we calculate the area for the rectangle if it is a circle or in any other uh, scenario because we have only two uh, two shapes that we support right now so this means that it's either one or it is the other so we have this else it means that it is a circle so we kind of like uh, just use this uh, way this other way to kind of like implement how do we uh, calculate the area for that and now maybe you have implemented this functionality it's already in production everything works fine but as it happens very often with software is that uh, there comes a product owner or product manager or whoever which says hey this functionality is really cool it's exactly what we needed we need uh, actually to extend that and we want to actually be able to also calculate the area for squares so you as a developer would say okay no problem with that so let me do that as a developer so let's go here maybe let's just create a new class uh let's call this class square and uh i'm not sure what exactly happens here with uh with rider because it kind of like doesn't create the classes the way that i would expect them uh, it to do so uh let me try it again so i would have this class which is called square and right now it is okay so we'll have here a pub a property public uh, int and we'll call this side because the square that has only one side that kind of like is important for us right now because otherwise you can kind of like this define the square based only on one uh, uh, side length and you already know what it is all about so you can even come here in this area calculator and say for instance if uh, shape is uh, square so in that case okay we want to uh, have this difference so we'll have here a square um, and we will uh, cast this object to a square of course i have to also type incorrectly because we know that it is a square right now uh, because we are inside this if so it means that everything's okay so in that case uh, of course we also need a semicolon here area plus equals and we say uh, here square uh, dot side times um, square dot side cool 
and voila right now we already we have implemented this new requirement however whenever we are in this type of scenario where we have something already done a functionality that's already there and we kind of like need to extend that functionality in any other way after we write our code or maybe even before but sometimes after uh, it is only after where you actually see the problems uh, is ask yourself okay uh, is everything okay with with what i have just done and the question here is okay what have i done i have a new requirement so i had to modify this algorithm to also accommodate this new requirement that it should calculate the area for a square so semantically already we know that we have performed a modification and this is actually what it means in this principle that it should be closed for modifications so when you design a class a module a method you should think about that, that whenever you want to extend the functionality you should be able to not modify the algorithm at all but just maybe add some other classes and everything should work kind of like out of the box uh, with this new extended functionality so that's what this uh, ocp principle is all about and before we kind of like refactor this code i just want to to settle down on on two aspects the first aspect is okay what is a red flag that we might or that some code might violate this ocp principle and what is a common or the most common technique to actually get uh, rid of that and make your code compliant again with this ocp principle now the idea is that whenever you are in a method uh, or well in a module and you see a construct like this here like with a lot of ifs so if this is like that then do this uh, do this thing if it is the other way then do this other thing if it is the third way then do this other thing and if not then please maybe just do something else uh, or whenever you have a switch statement with a lot of cases so whenever you see this type of construct in your code that's very often a red flag an indication that you might violate or that that code might violate this old open close principle and i'm not saying that it is always true I, i'm just saying it is just a red flag so whenever you come across in code on constructs that are based on a lot of different ifs or on a switch statement you might just think about it as a red flag and have a deeper thought about if this is violating the open close principle or not so that that's the red flag now a very common technique to actually solve this and make the code compliant again with the ocp principle is kind of like try to abstract away uh, this idea of what we actually do here in our case we just calculate areas and try to actually move this type of functionality uh, not in an if but let's think about e uh, uh, each if block or each uh, case scenario in a switch statement should probably have one way or the other its own class because that would make everything more extensible because if we can actually add this functionality to a certain class when we need to extend that it would mean that we just need to add a new class and everything should work so the idea is that when we want to solve and make our code compliant to this OCP principle is we try kind of like try to abstract it away in other constructs if possible and the two ways that we can we could do that very easily is either we use an interface to abstract away some some common type of behavior and to make each geometric shape in our case implement kind of like that type of behavior that is very specific to the geometric shape itself or we could even uh, use an abstract class and since in our case we are working with geometrical shapes and all our classes here are a geometric shape so we have this is a relationship we could even use the full-blown inheritance and create an abstract class to actually solve this problem so let's refactor our code right now to make it compliant again with this open closed principle so the first thing that i would like to do is i would like to introduce a new class and i will call this new class shape uh, okay but that's once again exactly the same thing happened before uh i'll just gonna delete that and create it uh from from scratch and uh, yeah that would basically uh, it's so class interface we want to have here a class and it should be called a shape and this time uh, it worked and in this class the only thing that we'll have here is a public abstract uh, double area method 
that would uh, calculate the area and uh, of course we need to also mark this uh, class as an abstract class and we should be good to go now that's actually everything we need to abstract away the functionality of calculating areas and what we can do in this case let's let's start from the top here is we have the circle and we say that okay uh, dear circle starting now you are a geometric shape so you inherit that and as part of this inheritance because this is an abstract method you need to implement that uh, so nothing easier than that let's come let's come here to the circle and uh, that would be how we actually do that uh, so let's go back to the circle and instead of throwing just a not implemented exception uh, let me just uh, have here a return and of course we can get rid of this kind of like circle name because we can just use directly the property and everything should be good to go so right now we have refactored our circle cool now the next thing that we can do is we can move to this other geometric shape and this is the rectangle and say hey the rectangle starting now you are a geometric shape and you also inherit this shape uh, class and as part of that because you have a contract to fulfill right now, you need to implement this method. Okay, cool. Uh, nothing more easy than that. Let's come back here and just return um, height times width. So that would calculate the area for the rectangle. And similarly, we have the square, which is the brand new class that we need to add. We needed to add as, as a functionality. And we'll say, dear square, starting now, you are also a geometric shape. And as part of that, you must know to actually calculate your own area. So in that case, I will say return uh, side times side. Cool. So we are okay with that right now. Now, the only thing that we need to do here is we can actually come to this method. And the thing is that we can already get rid of everything that we have here. And you see that the time that we actually make our code compliant to this OCP principle, the entire code of the algorithm that we had initially gets way more simpler than it was before. That's another very important sign about the fact that you are doing a good refactoring and you are adhering to principles is that your code actually gets, uh, uh, gets easier to understand, more maintainable and uh, easier to test. And it just looks better. So the only thing is here, instead of having an object array, we will have a shape array. So we know that everything here is a shape. And we can just say uh, area uh, plus, uh, where where uh, is that? Uh, plus equals um, shape dot area. And uh, voila, that would be it. At the end, we actually return everything. So right now, the code that we have is performing exactly the same type of stuff that it was performing before. But right now, it's actually fully compliant with this open close principle. Because if somebody comes here and say, hey, do you have a very cool area calculator? Let's have also a triangle to it. Well, sure, no problem. We just add a new class for the triangle that would implement this shape. It would have to implement the area method. And here we literally wouldn't have have to change any single line of code. It would actually remain 100% the same. Of course, if we want to also have an hexagon, no problem. It's very simple. You just add a new class, make it it hairy shape, implement the area method. Nothing would change here in this algorithm that we have right now. So right now it means that whenever we want to add the functionality, we just need to extend that, but we will never modify this code again. Unless, of course, maybe, I don't know, we want uh, to calculate maybe the area not for uh, all the shapes, but maybe only for one shape, whatever. But that would actually mean that we need to, to kind of like perform a change to the functionality itself. So it, it's not an update. It's not it's not a modification. It's kind of like it, it needs to change because the, the requirement is different. So it's not that you just need to add a... To, to add or to support an additional functionality from this method is that this method needs to change. It has a new requirement. So in that case, you are not violating this open close principle. You kind of like need to do that. So there's no problem with that at all. So that's kind of it about the open close principle. As I said, it's not very, very complicated. And as a very basic conclusion, I would just like to, to settle once again. Uh, whenever you have in methods construct that heavily rely on a bunch of ifs, uh, or on a switch statement with a bunch of different uh, cases, 
then that might be a red flag and you should consider and try to understand if that code violates the open close principle or not because that is definitely a red flag and if you come to the idea that it violates the open close principle and you want to refactor that the most common technique to actually do that is abstract behavior from that ifs or from that cases uh, in standalone classes because the moment that you actually do that or well in standalone classes or interfaces the idea is that you just abstract them away uh, uh, the one way or the other because the moment you actually have that it means that whenever you need to add a new functionality you just need to add a new class that kind of like inherits or implements that uh, abstract class or that interface and nothing should change with your functionality so abstraction is usually the solution uh, to make your code compliant to this open close principle so this being said thank you very very much for watching if you enjoy this content and do you think it might be useful also for others don't be shy and feel free to share that on your social media with your friends, with your colleagues, with your peers, with whoever you might think that it would find this video worthful and uh, useful and probably they will be thankful for you for that. And if you want to support this channel, very important, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you didn't do that already. And very important, just comment in the comment section if you have any question, if you have any idea. If you have anything that you want to talk about in this video, mostly related to solid principles and the open close principle, don't be shy, use the comment section, let's get in touch, let's get a discussion going and I would be more than happy to answer all your questions or enter all your discussions. Once again, this being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.